Well, George, first to put this in perspective, and as some of your correspondents just said, this is the worst attack on Israel since 1973, the Yom Kippur War, almost exactly 50 years ago. But there's a fundamental difference. That was a war uh, that was state to state, country to country, army to army. This is a massive terrorist attack that is gunning down Israeli civilians in their towns, in their homes, and as we've seen so graphically, literally dragging people across the, the border with Gaza, including a Holocaust survivor in a wheelchair, women and children. So you can imagine the impact this is having throughout Israel, and the world should be revolted at what it's seen. Uh, we have immediately um, engaged uh, our Israeli partners and, uh, and allies. President Biden was on the phone with Prime Minister Netanyahu early yesterday to assure him of our full support. Uh, I was on the phone with the Israeli president, the foreign minister. The entire government has been engaged throughout the region and well beyond. George, it's no surprise that those opposed to the efforts to normalize relations between Saudi Arabia and Israel, and more broadly, uh, to normalize Israel's relations with countries uh, throughout the region and beyond, <laughs> who opposes it? Uh, Hezbollah, Hamas, uh, and, uh, and Iran. So to the extent that this was designed to try to derail the efforts that were being made, um, that speaks volumes. Uh, right now, the focus is on dealing with this attack, dealing with Hamas, and we'll come to the, uh, the normalization efforts, which, by the way, are incredibly difficult when it comes to uh, Saudi Arabia and Israel. Lots of hard issues to work through. But if we could get there, um, that would significantly advance stability uh, in the region. Uh, it would offer so many uh, greater prospects for people in all of these countries. And there are basically two paths that are before the region right now. One is the path of, of uh, normalization, of integration, uh, of people working together. And by the way, uh, in that and on that path, it's not a substitute for resolving the differences between Israelis and Palestinians. On the contrary, uh, it needs to be used to advance that effort as well. But that's one path. The other path is what we've seen from Hamas, terrorism, horror, and something that offers not only nothing to people throughout the region, it offers nothing to the Palestinians. On the contrary, everything that Hamas does makes their situation, their plight, even worse. They bring nothing but death and destruction, not only to Israelis, but to Palestinians. So there's a long relationship between uh, Iran and, and Hamas. In fact, Hamas wouldn't be Hamas without the support that it's gotten over many years from Iran. We haven't yet seen direct evidence that Iran was behind this particular attack or involved, but the, the support over many years is clear. The uh, challenge for, uh, for Israel and uh, the challenge for all who support uh, Israel and oppose horrific acts of terrorism is, again, to take measures that provide for accountability for what's happened and also to do uh, our best to ensure that this doesn't happen again. Um, and that is likely to take some time. And it's fraught with very difficult decisions uh, for the Israelis to make. Uh, I don't want to uh, speculate, get ahead, get into, um, get into hypotheticals, but the, this is, now we're 24 hours or so into this. Uh, as I said, there remains intense fighting in, in the Gaza area, uh, and uh, the focus has to be on helping Israel recover the um, uh, territory that uh, has been taken briefly by, uh, by Hamas, uh, protecting its citizens, and taking whatever measures are necessary to avoid this repeating itself.